fit. We begin tonight with an NBC Augusta 26 News crime alert out of Richmond County. Good evening, I'm Steve Kuj. We've just received surveillance video from a robbery at the Circle K on the 1900 block of Gordon Highway in Augusta. The man in the video can be seen holding a customer and the cashier at gunpoint. Now, after grabbing the money, the man escaped out the front door on foot. No one was hurt in the robbery that happened around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Richmond County deputies are still looking for the man tonight. And if you have any information, please call the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. In North Augusta, public safety needs your help tonight to catch another robber. Dispatchers tell 26 News a man walked into the subway on the 300 block of East Martintown Road in North Augusta. He pulled out a gun and then demanded money. It happened this afternoon. The robber left on foot and ran through the woods. If you have any information, call North Augusta Public Safety. The mayor of Edgefield called a special meeting today to decide what to do with the center. It's a meeting building in a popular party spot. The town had to shut down after gunfire became a common problem and a man was shot. NBC Augusta's Ariel Clay was at the meeting and shows us how the community plans to clean up the center. Essie Nicholson has her eyes set on this building. That's because she believes it can help her change lives. It would give us more room because we're like crowded where we are now. We have 22 children and if we had more room, we can take in more children. Her organization, Women in Unity, provides after school tutoring and care to local kids. They want to use the center to expand their program. The only thing is that Nicholson and her group aren't the only ones hoping to take over the building. There are several people wanting the building and I've just asked them to get together and organize. Edgefield Mayor Ken Durham called a meeting Saturday to figure out what to do with the center. It's been a community meeting place for years. Recently though, there have been some problems. Several shootings over a three or four week period and it's ultimately someone got shot and um, we shut the facility down. Now Durham is calling on the community to decide who should take over the center. There are five organizations other than Nicholson's group that are interested. Personally, I'd like to see the church. It's right next door to the church here. Um, take ownership of it. But not everyone thinks that's the best idea, including the pastor of the church. When we organize, we organize for everybody because it's just the black community center. It's just the color community center. It's just not just for one entity or one group. Instead, most everyone at the meeting agreed the building should be shared. The board going to have one person to each entity to be on that board to represent that particular group. Yeah, I think it's the best best, best way to have a, a central board. Willie Bright, who went to the center as a child, says he's hopeful that it can once again be a special place for the people of Edgefield. It can be a va valuable asset to this community. Ariel Clay, NBC Augusta, 26 News. Now, according to the city's lawyer, there are currently no legal owners of the center, and that's why it's been so difficult to decide just who can take it over. The deed of the building is in the name of a group called Colored Community Center, but that group actually has no legal status. All of the interested organizations plan to meet again next month to put together a board for the center. New at 11, NBC Augusta 26 News has a recall to tell you about tonight. 26 News has learned the Oklahoma for firm Whitney's Chili has been recalled for having small pebbles or stones found inside. Now, if you bought a 5 or 20 pound bag of Whitney's Chili with beans, premium no MSG bags between November 6th and January 13th, you should throw them away immediately. Now, for a complete list of products and numbers that are affected, the recall log is on NBCAugusta.com. There we put up a link to the food safety website you can check out. And a late accident last night in Richmond County has taken the life of a Hepzibah man. The Richmond County deputy's coroner tells us Kendrick Pace crossed into the northbound lanes of Windsor Spring Road and hit another vehicle head on. Pace died of head injuries he suffered in the accident. The coroner says a toxicology test will be performed to see if alcohol was a factor in the crash. And today was election day in Iraq and it also served as a test of Iraq's security forces and their ability to keep voters safe. Richard Engel has more from Baghdad. These elections are not only a test of Iraq's stability and security, but also of President Obama's pledge to end the war in Iraq and pull out U.S. troops in 16 months, handing over to the Iraqi security forces. The signs are encouraging. There have been no major incidents, and Iraqi security forces, not U.S. troops, are securing polling stations across the country. The Iraqi troops and police have been putting in very strict security measures, imposing curfews, blocking streets. They uh, ban cars from the roads. It appears that security is excellent, uh, courtesy of the great Iraqi security forces and the Iraqi police. 
also different in this election compared to ones that were held four years ago. We're seeing a much greater confidence from the candidates themselves. In the past, candidates were afraid to show their identities. Now they're openly putting their pictures on campaign posters, even running ads on national television. It is an election in which I think honestly will show all of us and the Iraqi people most of all uh, how this country is gradually standing on its own two feet. Also different this time, many more women. Of the 14,000 candidates competing in these provincial elections, 4,000 of them are women. Results are expected in three to five days. Richard Engel, NBC News, Baghdad. Two female officers with South Carolina State Police say they were denied promotions just because they are women. The officers say they were turned down for lieutenant's positions in 2006 and 2007. The former head of SLED denies the women's allegations, citing there were several high-ranking women positions when he was there. He says the women have no evidence they were treated unfairly. Now your NBC 26 Storm Tracker forecast with Rich Rogers. Well, we've got a nice uh, second half of the weekend to look forward to. Sunshine for two days in a row on the weekend. It's been a long time since we've seen that. Lots of fog and clouds lately, but not this weekend. Sunny and mild again tomorrow. A shower chance, though, on Monday, especially late in the day. But dry and cold weather moves back in for Tuesday and Wednesday. So starting off around 25 tomorrow morning, but quickly warming up to 65 for our high temperature. Again, lots of sunshine. And, of course, about Super Bowl time, uh, 59 degrees. And, of course, you can watch that here on NBC Augusta tomorrow afternoon, 48 degrees at 9 o'clock. Forecast for the Super Bowl in Tampa, 63 degrees. A few clouds at kickoff time, 620. Winds will be light out of the southwest. So a very nice day in Tampa for the game. 31 right now at Bushfield, 38 here in downtown Augusta, 45 at, at Danielfield. So a widespread in temperatures across the area right now and winds are calm. It's 42 in Atlanta, 35 in Macon, 40 in Greenville, and also 35 in Savannah. High pressure and control, and that's what's keeping us nice and dry and cool out there. And that high will continue to slide off to the east, so by tomorrow morning it'll be located just offshore of about Jacksonville, Florida. Cold front moving toward our area, and a big dip in the jet stream starts to develop by Monday morning, and that's going to spawn this area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico, which will move closer to us by the time we get into a late Monday. Most of the moisture offshore, most of the rain will be offshore, but uh, we will see a little bit of rain from Alabama up into Georgia and South Carolina. So right now we're expecting definitely less than a half inch of rain and probably much less than that, unfortunately. So our dry streak looks to continue, but this trough really digs deep into the south by Tuesday morning, all the way down into, into the Orlando area. So much colder air coming in behind this big area of low pressure and down in the base of this trough for Tuesday and Wednesday, highs only in the 40s. So for tonight, dropping now to 25 degrees, clear and chilly. Then tomorrow, 65, lots of sun, warmer than today. And here's that three-day focus. We'll stay at, uh, in the 60s on Monday. And again, Monday is Groundhog Day. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. 30% chance of rain late in the day. 46 on Tuesday. And look at these overnight lows back into the lower 20s, Tuesday night and Wednesday night. Highs in the mid-40s on Wednesday. And then warming up, but staying dry through the rest of the week. And Jason Folk is here tonight. Jason, I wonder what you've got to tell us about it. Now, it looks like something other than the Super Bowl, though. Yeah, <laughs> just perfect day, though, tomorrow to get out and enjoy some ribs, cook some hamburgers, cook some hot dogs. Just save me one while you're at it <laughs> and enjoy the Super Bowl. We are talking a little golf tonight, however, where there are currently 90 players that have earned an invite into this year's Masters. Scott Piercy, not one of them, but the 30-year-old from Las Vegas is just one round away from changing that third round. The FBR Open, we pick things up on 11 with the aforementioned Piercy. Gets the birdie putt to drop. He will start tomorrow's final round one shot off the lead held by this man, Kenny Perry on 18. Get your roll on. That's a birdie. He shoots a five under 66. And as we mentioned, we'll start the final round with a one shot lead and taking a look at the leaderboard, Augustus Vaughn Taylor shoots a two over 73. BT will start tomorrow's final round 10 shots back and coming up a little bit later in sports. Great day. College basketball action. We'll have the highlights for you, Steve. All right. Thanks, Jason. Now something I'm sure we'll all be watching tomorrow. The biggest football game of the year, just less than 24 hours away. And what would a great Super Bowl party be without good food? Next on NBC Augusta 26 News at 11, we'll tell you what's cooking for Super Bowl 43. <laughs> Stay with us.